Welcome to this installation video 2 about how to efficiently lift and fix the IPS8 air purge and connect it to piping in an ammonia plant. The IPS8 installation is split into three small videos which includes video 1 showing how to correctly locate, connect and support the IPS8 in an ammonia plant. Video 2 showing how to correctly lift, fix and connect the IPS8 to relevant piping. And video 3 showing how to do electrical wiring of the IPS8. In these videos, we'll give you important installation tips ensuring your safe and reliable system operation. So go ahead and check out the IPS8 installation video which will meet your needs. In this IPS8 installation video 2, we will show you the IPS8 main technical specifications, how to unpack, locate, lift and handle the IPS8, how to mount the IPS8 weld flanks onto piping, and how to fix the IPS8 to the support construction. We will also show you how to connect the IPS8 weld flanks and purge flanks, how to connect the IPS8 to the purge solenoid valves and piping, and how to connect the IPS8 to the water tank and piping. Here you see the main technical specifications of the IPS8. It is very important to observe and install the IPS8 according to these technical specifications. Please note that there are three different IPS8 versions available, including a 230V AC 50Hz, which is CE marked, a 230V AC 60Hz, and a 230V AC 60Hz with 150V AC 60Hz supply for the field coils. This version is UL approved. Most of the technical specifications are identical for all three versions. However, as seen, there are some differences in the electrical specifications, the enclosure rating, and the weight for the UL version compared to the other two versions. We will not go into details with the technical specifications since you can find more information in the user guides for these three IPS8 versions. As seen from the IPS8 technical specifications, then the IPS8 non-UL versions have an enclosure rating of IP55 and they can therefore be installed outside within the specified ambient temperature ranges. Here you see some examples of outside IPS8 installations. If possible, then avoid installing the IPS8 in direct sunlight as this might lead to excessive sunlight exposure and result in the ambient temperatures increasing about the specified limits. For ambient temperatures below minus 10 degrees centigrade or 14 degrees Fahrenheit, then the IPS8 must be installed in a heated and ventilated area. Finally, it is important that the IPS8 is installed in a non-ATEX atmosphere since the IPS8 is not explosion proof. You can find more information about the IPS8 connection locations and connection points in the IPS8 installation video 1 and in the IPS8 user guide. In this video, we will show you how to install the IPS8 when it is located inside in an ammonia refrigeration plant. It is very important to keep the IPS8 in upright position at all times from receipt to final installation. The IPS8 is delivered on a pallet and is safely fixed to the pallet with bolts. The IPS8 delivery includes one piece complete IPS8 unit, one piece weld flanks, one piece flat gasket to mount between the weld flanks and the purchase flanks, four piece bolt to fix the weld flanks to the purchase flanks, and one piece user guide. We recommend to remove the IPS8 side covers from the frame to facilitate an easy removal of the fixing bolt from the IPS8 and the pallet. Please note that this is not possible with the IPS8 UL version since the side covers are ground wired to the IPS8 frame. If the side covers of the IPS8 non-UL version have been removed, then we recommend to wait to remount them onto the frame until the IPS8 is mounted and fixed onto the support construction. This will make it easier to fix the IPS8 to the support construction and check that all internal IPS8 parts are okay. You can find more information in the IPS8 installation video 1 and in the IPS8 user guide. The IPS8 unpacking procedure is shown in the following sequences. As 
As mentioned earlier, it is very important to keep the IPS8 in upright position at all times, also during lifting. If there is sufficient clearance in the refrigeration plant area where the IPS8 is installed, then use a suitable lifting gear to lift the IPS8 into position on the support construction. For this lifting procedure, you should always use the lifting eyes located on each side of the IPS8 cabinet. Use all four lifting eyes and use lifting gear during installation, which is suitable for the IPS8 weight of 100 kg or 221 pounds. For the IPS8 UL version, the lifting gear should be suitable for a weight of 125 kg or 276 pounds. You can find more information in the IPS8 installation video 1 and in the IPS8 user guide. If it is not possible to lift the IPS8 with a suitable lifting gear, as just mentioned, then you can lift the IPS8 while it is still placed on the pallet by using a truck, and then carefully place the IPS8 in its location. Be very cautious, because the IPS8 is now located unfixed on the pallet since the fixing bolts have already been removed, as shown earlier in this video. You can find more information in the IPS8 installation video 1 and in the IPS8 user guide. Lifting and locating the IPS8 by using a truck is shown in the following sequences. Before we can locate and fix the IPS8 on the support construction, then we first need to ensure that the well flanks for connection between the IPS8 and the ammonia plant piping is correctly welded onto the piping. As mentioned earlier, then this well flanks is delivered together with the IPS8. The ammonia plant piping to be connected to the IPS8 well flanks should never be smaller than the inner diameter of 37 mm or 1.5 inch of the well flanks as specified here. It's very important that the well flanks is welded onto the piping according to legal requirements and given practice. It is also very important that the IPS8 is never used as grounding for any welding as specified on the warning label, which is mounted on the purser flanks as seen here. Here you see an example of how the well flanks is welded onto the piping. You can find more information in the IPS8 user guide. Another step we need to do before we can locate and fix the IPS8 to the support construction is that we firstly need to remove the protective rubber block from the Percha flanks opening. This can be done by inserting a screwdriver between the Percha flanks opening and the rubber block, and then carefully twist and push out the rubber block. You can find more information in the IPS8 user guide. Removal of the rubber block is shown in the following sequences. Carefully lift and locate the IPS8 on the support construction. Be careful not to damage the IPS8 unit, the IPS8 purge of flanks, the piping wood well flanks, and the support construction during the lifting and location of the IPS8. You can find more information in the IPS8 installation video 1 and in the IPS8 user guide. Once the IPS8 is located on the support construction, then ensure that the bolt holes in the IPS8 cabinet are aligned with the bolt holes in the support construction. Also ensure that the percha flanks is aligned with the piping with weld flanks. Then mount all the IPS8 cabinet bolts and tighten them firmly. Please note that these cabinet bolts are not supplied with the IPS8. You can find more information in the IPS8 installation video 1 and in the IPS8 user guide. It is recommended to visually check that all internal IPS8 parts are OK after the lifting, location and fixing of the IPS8. If the side covers have been removed during unpacking, then carefully remount these side covers. It is recommended to first remove the top cover from the frame to facilitate an easy mounting of the side covers. After removal of the top cover, then mount the inner and outer side covers to the IPS8 frame and fix them with the side cover bolts. Then remount the top cover and fix it with the top cover bolts. As mentioned earlier, 
then the site covers should not have been removed for the IPS8 UL version. You can find more information in the IPS8 installation video 1 and in the IPS8 user guide. We are now ready to connect the well flanks with the purge flanks using the flat gasket and the four bolts which are delivered with the IPS8 as mentioned earlier in this video. Therefore do the following. Insert the flat gasket between the well flanks and the purge flanks. Push the well flanks upwards against the purge flanks while mounting the four bolts. Then cross tighten the four bolts to the specified torque. After connection of the flanks, then perform a leak test according to legal requirements and given practice to ensure an airtight connection between the flanks. You can find more information in the IPS8 user guide. Connect the IPS8 weld flanks with piping to a suitable quantity and type of perch valves and suitable piping from the perch points, all depending on the number of perch points needed. Here you see an example of an installation with eight perch points. It is recommended to install shutoff valves between the IPS8 and the perch valves. It is important to avoid liquid traps between the IPS8 and the perch valves. Therefore, Ensure downward sloping piping flowing from the IPS8, as shown here in this example. After installation of perch valves and piping, then install other equipment and piping as needed, depending on the given application. Install the perch valves, piping and other equipment according to legal requirements and given practice. You can find more information in the installation video 1 and in the IPS8 user guide. The last step in the IPS8 connection to the ammonia refrigeration system is to install a suitable pipe or hose from the IPS8 blow-off pipe to a water tank of maximum 200 liters or 53 gallon. This is to allow blow-off of air and NC gases, ensuring that the air and NC gases can be immersed in the water in the water tank according to legal requirements and given practice. However, before we can connect the IPS8 blow-off to a water tank, we first need to seal and mount the restrictor correctly inside the IPS8 blow-off pipe. Therefore, do the following. Remove the restrictor from the blow-off pipe. Ensure that the restrictor opening is clean and unblocked, and that the restrictor flats are clean. Seal the restrictor flats with PTFE sealing tape. Keep the tape minimum 2 mm from the cone edge and wrap approximately 10 windings. Remount the restrictor inside the blow-off pipe and tighten it. You can find more information in the IPS8 user guide. The next step is then to connect the blow-off pipe to the water tank. Please note that it is important to regularly check the pH level in the water tank to ensure that a max pH level of 12.6 is never exceeded. If this value is exceeded, then the water in the water tank must be renewed. An efficient way to manage this pH level is to insert a water bubbler between the IPS8 blow-off and the water tank. This water bubbler mixes fresh water with the air and NC gas, which is discharged to the water tank. The water mixing happens every time an air purge sequence is done, ensuring that the max pH level in the water tank is not exceeded. Therefore, do the following. Wrap PTFE sealing tape onto a suitable hose adapter. Mount and tighten the hose adapter on the blow-off pipe. Mount a suitable hose onto the hose adapter. This hose will be connected to the water bubbler. We recommend to insert a check valve between the blow-off pipe and the water bubbler, as shown here in this example. This prevents unintentional water backflow into the IPS8. You can find more information in the IPS8 user guide. Now install a suitable water bubbler as shown here in this example. Ensure that the water bubbler is safely fixed, for example onto the wall as shown here. Then do the following. Install a suitable freshwater solenoid valve according to legal requirements and given practice. Connect the solenoid valve to freshwater supply. Mount a hose between the solenoid valve and the water bubbler. Mount the air and NC gas hose to the water bubbler. Mount the drain hose to the water bubbler. Finally, 
route the drain hose to the water tank and connect the hose to the water tank according to legal requirements and given practice. We have now completed the IPS8 mechanical installation and connection to the ammonia system. For electrical installation of the IPS8, please check out the IPS8 installation video free. You can also find more information in the IPS8 user guide. You have now completed the IPS8 installation video 2, so now you know the IPS8 main technical specifications. You know how to locate, lift and handle the IPS8. You know how to mount the IPS8 weld flanks onto the piping. You know how to connect the IPS8 weld flanks and percher flanks. You know how to fix the IPS8 to the support construction. You know how to connect the IPS8 to perch valves and piping. And you know how to connect the IPS8 blow off to the water tank. All this ensuring a correct and safe system operation. Please check out the other online videos about IPS8 installation. You can also scan the QR code shown here to access more information about the IPS8, such as the IPS8 user guide. Have a look at the other online learnings about the Danfoss IPS8 air percher. Thanks for watching.